Welcome to this series of tutorials on special features in GHS. Tutorial number 910 focuses on grounding. And to be clear, uh, special features in GHS, these what I really mean are these are features that have not fit into any of the categories for any of the previous tutorials. So these are finishing up a few last items. Today we're going to focus on grounding. Uh, specifically we're going to show how to use the ground command and what the different uses of that might be. Uh, how to turn on penetration for grounding, and how to produce ground reports. But first, a quick disclaimer. This presentation is for instruction purposes only. It is not to be used in engineering for construction, and I am not a representative of Creative Systems. This is unofficial training only, based upon my own personal knowledge and experience. Uh, for the official training, you can contact Creative Systems at the information on the bottom of your screen. I highly recommend it, it's quite informative. So, grounding analysis. Now, so far, everything in GHS has assumed that the vessel is floating in the water. Now what we're going to actually introduce is the concept that the vessel might have some part of it in contact with the ground as well. And so, the way that GHS does this mathematically is the ground contact is essentially treated as a negative weight. Uh, and that has pretty significant implications for your stability because the contact is going to be at the bottom of your hull. So when you're adding a negative weight at the bottom, uh, it's the same thing as adding a positive weight up high. You know, it reduces your stability. So the grounding analysis is something pretty important. Uh, the uses for this application-wise, this might be for, say, a docking analysis. Uh, this is something that they do when a ship is being docked. You know, um, they have to look at it to make sure that it remains stable during the docking analysis, that it uh, doesn't break its own longitudinal strength. Uh, same thing you might look at launching analysis, or you might also look at a salvage analysis, a damage assessment of the vessel. So you know, basically any situation where you're looking at a ship transitioning from freely floating to being partially or, or fully supported by one or two points of contact then that's when you're going to use the ground command in GHS. And as I said, the command is ground in GHS. Uh, the way GHS does this is um, each ground contact is a single point contact. So it's, a, you know, there's no assumption of, say, like a sandy, muddy bottom, bottom that distributes slowly throughout the vessel's surface. You know, every ground point is a single point contact. And the way you define it in GHS is very much the same way as you would define a force, actually. So you have the command ground, G-R-O-U-N-D, that's the keyword. You've got a description to describe whatever it is you want, up to 25 characters. Uh, then a force and an XYZ location. Uh, the XYZ location, that is the location of where the ground force makes contact with your hull. Okay, and you'll have to remember that because that, that's uh, something we're going to distinguish with later on. So remember the uh, coordinates are always where the, where the force contacts your hull. And as an example here, for example, you might describe a ground of a rock at 15050. So that's saying it's a force of 15 in your current weight units. Because remember, GHS thinks in weight, not in force. And at zero at coordinates zero five zero. So that's right at the four perpendicular, five meters to starboard, and right on baseline. Pretty common since we know grounding normally happens at the bottom of the ship. Uh, now in terms of specifying your grounding location, a couple other things that are fairly good to know. Uh, you can specify two keywords, uh, the min and the max keyword, in place of TCB or VCB. So your transverse or vertical location, you can uh, to specify these. Now, the way it works is you have to define two axes, and then that once you define those two axes, those two locations, uh, then the minimum or maximum will find the minimum point or the maximum point in that third axis that you've put in the keyword in, in place of. And that's going to account for things like vessel trim uh, and all of that. So it's fairly useful if you're saying, you know, I'm 
talking like a damage analysis or a, or a um, salvage analysis and you know you've got the vessel at a, a trim uh, this will just simply find the point the first point that would have made contact so there are two ways to use that uh, number one is for finding the TCB uh, in that case you would specify the actual numbers for the LCB and VCB and in place of TCB you would use the, this min or max keyword uh, the maximum is the point farthest to starboard and the minimum is the point farthest to port or the other way you might use it is to find the VCB uh, in which case you specify numbers for the LCB and TCB and maximum is the topmost point minimum is the bottommost point okay now there's another thing that you can also use in grounding analysis which is the penetration option so when you define the grounding point like this with just simply a single force then it, that's it it's a single static force it doesn't change but you can define multiple points and there's this question of what happens if the draft changes you know as the vessel is being say docked as the water is draining out how quickly does the weight change that sort of stuff and remember the that this will also change the trim for the vessel as well so uh, it might change how much weight is actually put on each point on the vessel and to account for that you have this penetration option and what it does is instead of having the ground point be a single fixed force it instead treats that ground point as a very very stiff spring essentially that the vessel is resting on and I should actually mention this is a uh, non-linear spring so in GHS the ground force varies with uh, your spring compression squared the square of your spring compression um, and the other thing that's useful about this penetration option is you can actually specify a distance at which point the ground point actually turns off that is to say it doesn't apply a force on the vessel yet again very useful for say a docking analysis because what you might do in a docking analysis is define multiple points one for each one of the docking blocks and then what you'll have is the vessel is actually going to be set up with a trim angle intentionally so that it makes contact with one block first and then slowly levels out with all the others and that's why you want this penetration option because you actually want to recognize things like that where most of the blocks are not working just yet so the way you use that is the option added on penetration and then there are two values you have to give it DD0 and DDM uh, DD0 is the current spring compression distance now that matches up to the current force that's for set for your grounding value and this can be positive or negative if it's a positive number that's saying how much the spring is already compressed if it's a negative number that's the distance away from your grounding point um, and if it's a negative number then your your current grounding value is zero there's no force because you haven't entered in compression just yet so uh, make sure you coordinate those two always but that's how you can actually uh, set grounding setups like this and DDM is the maximum compression distance for that spring now this typically by default GHS says that this distance should be 2% of your load water or your waterline length uh, it's not particularly important as long as it's a very small distance compared to your total ship length and the way GHS thinks of that is the at the maximum compression distance that ground point will be holding the full vessel displacement so that lets you understand exactly what happens at full compression as an example here we might specify a grounding point of mud that has a value of 15 uh, right now there's our coordinates and then we specify the penetration saying that it's currently only 0.1 meters in the mud uh, and it has a maximum distance of 1.5 meters so mud is another thing that you might use the penetration option for to recognize that mud is kind of squishy it doesn't automatically hold the full weight right at once 
Okay, so that's how to uh, use grounding points. Now there's a few more things left to know. Uh, first off, how do you get the list of current ground points? You type ground report. So there's that one. And then the last thing is, how do you delete existing grounding points? You, know, uh, you might want to clear them out to put in a new set, for example. Uh, it works just like with a weight item, a fixed weight item. So you use the delete command, and then you type the name of your ground item. OK, and then the last thing I want to do is provide you with a bit of overview of how would you go through a grounding analysis. So step number one is you would set up all of these grounding points. Um, and what you're going to do is your vessel is probably going to have some form of trim on it. And so your grounding points are going to have a different distance of separation. Uh, you will include a penetration stiffness for each one of these. And you want to adjust your separation, your penetration distances, so that only one point is just now starting to make contact with your vessel. OK, so all of your points are set up. Great. Step two, you're going to now take that initial condition and reduce your draft by a small increment. Step three is equalize your vessel. Use the solve command. Step four, you get your status of your vessel. So things you especially want to check for is your GMT. That's critical. That has to remain positive. And you're probably also going to want to check longitudinal strength. So these will show up as point shears in your longitudinal strength. And it's uh, something very much worth checking. Step number five, repeat steps two through four. And you're finished when your draft is zero, when your vessel is being completely supported by your grounding points. OK, so it's time to practice that. Homework 911, I would like you to perform a docking analysis on the barge. Uh, give the barge an initial trim of one meter over the length between perpendiculars and define four ground points. Now, this is a very simplified case of only four ground locations. So these are four docking blocks for your barge. Uh, none of them are in initial contact. So you none have a force just yet. Uh, point number one is going to be at 0, 0, point two will be at 50, 8, point three will be at 50, negative 8, and point number four is going to be at 100, 0. Notice I have not given you the z coordinates of all of these. Uh, that's something you need to figure out for yourself. So remember that the uh, one of these should be the one that's just now making contact with your barge. And also remember that your barge, um, your barge is at trim right now, but your grounding points are not. So just remember that. Okay, once you get it all set up, go ahead and reduce your draft in increments of 0.1 meters. At each step, check the status and stability of your barge. Uh, specifically, uh, use status GHS. And for extra credit, at each step, check the longitudinal strength of the barge. Uh, specifically, look at the hull deflection and the hull stress. OK, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this informative and educational. Uh, you can find the homework files along with solutions and other tutorial videos at dmsonline.us. Thanks very much.